easily change to suit the season. The best thing about decorative pillows is that they are easy to sew, plus an affordable way to put a finishing touch on your home decor. I'd like to share with you my favorite tips and techniques that will help create perfectly square pillows that look really square. Now you may think that's an unusual statement to say a square pillow look perfectly square, but yet if you start off with a square fabric, the corners of the pillows look dog-eared and perhaps you've made a pillow like that before. I'm going to show you how to eliminate that look so that you have a very professional looking pillow. We're going to be working with a 14 inch pillow form and I've started with a square of tissue paper 15 and a half inches. In other words, an inch and a half larger than your pillow form. And with your tissue pattern, you're going to make a pattern for the front and the underside of the pillow, fold in half and cut along the fold. One of the halves is going to be placed on the fold of the fabric and that's why I have the arrow on the fold of the fabric for the front and the back is going to have an underlay section. The green addition was four and a half inches wide. And you're going to place some nips or marks in this extension at four and a half and three inches, both at both ends of the extension, four and a half and three and a half. And then to get rid of the dog-eared sections that often happen with square fabric, I've had that happen, is to use a pillow corner template and the corner area is where you need to pay attention because this is going to be traced on all four exposed corners of the pillow and you're going to trace and then cut this a little extension of the blue of the tissue paper remove that so you do at both corners of the of the top and the same with both corners of the underlay and trim the next tissues have already been trimmed and they're pinned to the fabric Speaking of fabric, I'm working with a twill, a little heavier weight. If you're working with a cotton, you may want to cut a second layer of fabric that's really not fabric exactly, but would be polyester fleece, so that the, the pillow will have a little bit more body to it. So you may want to cut another layer using these pattern pieces. Here you can see the front placed on the fold of the fabric, and here, of course, is the underlay area. Cut them out. And then if you're working with polyester fleece, pin the fleece to the respective pieces on the wrong side. And that's what I've done just for the pillow top. I think that's where it's needed the most. And you, want, you can baste around the edges or just pin it in place. Most of the work is going to happen initially with the underlay where the, you have the overlap of the pattern pieces. Press along the pieces along the three inch nip mark. We, we've nipped at three inches and four and a half on both ends of this pillow. And then in the three inch section, you're going to fuse interfacing, a three inch strip on both halves of the underlay. And then you can see we've pre-pressed these areas. Now to have a closure, the fastest closure to use is with a hook and loop tape easy to sew through, kind of tricky to pin. So rather than pinning these into place, what we like to use is a double-sided basting tape, like Wonder Tape. And then on this half, or th this section, I've placed the Wonder Tape. It's kind of white on white, but it's sticky tape placed on the wrong side of each of the areas. And then measure one inch in from the edge and place the section. Just place it one inch in, which I'll measure here very kind of quickly, and center it and pin down with the tape. For the underlay section, you can sew through both layers. For the overlay section, just sew through the single layer. So we'd again measure one inch, measure down a little bit more, center it, and then just sew through one layer. Let me show you that already sewn. You'll only be doing straight stitching when you're working with this technique. And on this back that has been completed, you can see the overlay. We don't see any top stitching, but we've top stitched the edges around the underlay. And then the Velcro or the hook and loop tape has been stitched through all layers. And then the facing area is stitched down. So you have a perfect 15 and a half inch backing for your pillow form. Now for the top. We've used some decorative effects with cording around the edges. This is ticking. I really like this look. 
when you have a stripe on the bias, it gives a nice home decor effect. And we can put on the piping the first step without stitching. We're going to be using Wrap and Fuse. The Wrap and Fuse is available in two convenient sizes, six yards, or you can use the package that has a little bit over two yards. It's called Wrap and Fuse because the cording is wrapped with fusible web. On the packaging, instructions are given how wide to cut the bias strip, about three, one and three eighths inches wide, and meet the Wrap and Fuse to the wrong side of the fabric, wrap the fabric around the fusible, and then with the edge of your iron, just press. And you can see that's the first step that normally is sewn, but now it has been created by pressing. It's fused into place. You can fuse enough wrap and fuse for you, the entire length that you'll need or the circumference to go around the top of the pillow. Now I'm going to meet right sides together, meeting the cut edges of the fabric to the cut edges of the top. And at the sewing machine, I'll soon be sewing, but I'll be putting on my sewing machine this foot. It's a foot that has a hollowed out groove section so that you can stitch right over the cording. You're going to move the needle position to the, to the right, so you'll be sewing right along the edge. And here's a close-up of the stitching. Stitching around the areas, pivoting at the corners, and then just continue to sew around the edges. You'll be using some traditional sewing techniques because you'll need to meet the piping together. We've folded under just about a quarter of an inch at the end of the piping and then cut the remainder of the piping out of that area so with that when the piping pieces overlap, you're not going to have, let me just kind of pin it in there for you, you can fuse this section, you're not going to have extra bulk. So you'll overlap this and then you can continue to sew at the beginning and ending spot to make it continuous. You're almost done. You've created the back, you've created the front, and now you sandwich the two together, meeting right sides and pin from the right side. On the right side, you will see the stitching line from the cording. You have the same setup at your sewing machine with the cords and piping foot in place and re-stitch this area, stitching around the area so you'll have the stitching one on top of the other. And as you can see doing this, it's very simple just to sew around all the edges. So after you've done this final stitching, then go through the opening, turn right side out. Because we've used the corner template to shape the corners, they look square, but the extra fabric from the dog ear area is gone. The batting helps give the front of your pillow a little extra support and shape, and the back closure will perfectly close the pillow once you put the 14-inch pillow form into place. Here's your pillow cover that's been made, and here's a stuffed pillow. A great way to add decor to your home. Nancy's Notions offers a full selection of sewing notions to test out your new creative skills. Order your supplies today.